Hello, thank you for joining me today while I go over some of Penguin Young Reader's Spring 23 highlights. I'm going to start off with nonfiction, as we have a fantastic list of titles that I'm sure you will want to add to your collections. Based on the adult bestseller by Dr. Ibram X. Kendi and co-authored by best-selling author Nick Stone, How to Be a Young Anti-Racist is a guide for teens seeking a way to move forward in acknowledging, identifying, and dismantling racism and injustice. Dr. Kendi, as many of you know, is the author of the number one, How to Be an Anti-Racist, and Stamped, which he co-authored with Jason Reynolds. 400 Souls, an Anti-Racist Baby, and was named one of the 100 most influential people in the world by Time Magazine in 2020. Nick Stone's debut novel for young adults, Dear Martin, was the number one New York Times bestseller. She is also the author of the New York Times bestseller, Clean Getaway, and the 2020 NPR Best Book of the Year selection, Dear Justice, a sequel to Dear Martin. In How to Be a Young Anti-Racist, they weave history, science, law, and personal stories to help teens understand complicated concepts about race and help them on their own anti-racist journey. This book is written with teens in mind and will offer readers a way to have conversations with both their peers and the adults in their life. Number one New York Times bestselling author Ruta Sepetti is combining her deep experience with research and her renowned ability to share the personal stories and memories of herself and others into her first nonfiction book to inspire and guide aspiring writers. With Ruta's solid adult fan base, we already have a foundation to build upon for reaching the crossover market. Ruta has shared so many stories and memories with her fans over the years and sees how they have affected inspired, and inspired others. She uses some of these stories and many never before shared to cle cleverly illustrate elements of the crafts of writing. We, can, we see this as becoming a go-to book for aspiring writers sitting alongside classics such as Bird by Bird by Annie Lamont and Stephen King's On Writing. Would no word for gay in Arabic, Luma may not have known what to call the feelings she had growing up in Jordan during the 1980s, but she knew well enough to keep them secret. Luma endures the agonizing process of applying for political assignment, asylum, which ensures her safety, but causes her family to break ties with her. Luma's story highlights the difficulties of seeking asylum in the United States and the additional challenges that refugees then face once they arrive. As hopeful as it is heartrending, from here is a coming-of-age memoir about one young woman's search for belonging and the many meanings of home for those who must leave theirs. Luma was also the subject of the best-selling Outcast United, which sparked community reads nationwide. From here will be a great addition to your collections as well to inspire more community reads. Mental Health America is the nation's leading community-based nonprofit dedicated to addressing the needs of those living with mental illness and promoting the overall mental health of all. Their programs and initiatives fulfill their mission of promoting mental health and preventing mental illness through advocacy, education, education, research, and services. Other young adult mental health books we found are focused on one specific problem or filled with dense technical prose. This is a radical departure and one that will be extremely helpful to teens and young adults who are just beginning to get a sense of their mental health struggles. Michael Pollan demonstrates how people and domesticated plants have formed a reciprocal relationship. He links four fundamental human desires, sweetness, beauty, energy, and control with the plants that satisfy them, the apple, the tulip, coffee, and the potato. In telling the stories of four familiar species, Pollen illustrates how the plants have evolved to satisfy humankind's most basic yearnings. And just as we benefited from these plants, we have also helped them to thrive. This edition comes at the ideal time when kids are very interested in gardening, environmentalism, and climate change, all of which are discussed in this book. Humans live longer now than they ever have in their more than 300,000 years of existence on Earth, and most, if not all, of the advances that have permitted the human lifespan to double have happened in living memory. Extra life 
looks at vaccines, seat belts, pesticides, and more, and how each of our scientific advancements have prolonged human life. This book is a deep dive into the sciences, perfect for younger readers who enjoy modern history as well as scientific advances. This series has sold more than 3.5 million copies and 11 titles have appeared on the New York Times bestseller list. The late civil rights activist and Congressman John Lewis is the 29th hero and prominent autistic American scientist and animal behaviorist Temple Grandin is the 30th hero in the best-selling Ordinary People Change the World picture book biography series. With the chapter books like I Survived, Who Was, She Persisted, and more, nonfiction is hot in the chapter book space, and this series fills a hole in the market. With a focus on how kids can help save each animal in this series, these books are not just informative, they're also inspirational. On the heels of the successful launch of the She Persistent series, Chelsea Clinton is launching this new series based on her passion for animal conservation. All these books are written by talented nonfiction writers who know just how to make information fun and accessible to kids, combined with a dozen photos of the animals featured in each. Following the success of the She Persisted picture books, this chapter book series gives readers a more in-depth look at the women featured in the picture books and beyond. For this third year, we will feature nine new chapter books about women who persisted. Each book will be written by a different author, including many award-winning and best-selling authors who we all know and love. Each book contains a list of what young readers can do today to honor and celebrate the subject of the book they've read. With more than 60 million in print, with more than 300 titles, this best-selling series has something to appeal to every reader. The Who Was Show, an Emmy award-winning family variety series based on the number one New York Times best-selling Who Was, is available to view on Netflix. The 80 high-quality black and white illustrations in each book, one on almost every page, engage young readers and bring the subjects to life. Our spring list is strong with people and subjects sure to delight readers and librarians. Young adult. In the author's words, who doesn't love a grand estate, a glamorous ball, and a juicy romance? Or four, even. Hits like Alex and Eliza and the Downstairs Girls and Netflix Bridgerton show readers growing appetite for thoughtful, swoony, historical young adult fiction. This is the first in a series that offers a glimpse into the critical period of American history, the time between Reconstruction in the South and the Great Migration to the North. A slice of history rarely if ever seen in young adult fiction from a black woman's perspective, let alone four distinct black female points of view. This well-paced, emotionally true, ever-evolving romantic tanglements of all four young women and their love interests are the story's bedrock and will resonate with both young adult and adult readers alike. The Nightbirds are Simta's best kept secret, girls with a unique and powerful magic. They can gift with just a kiss. Some would kill to possess them, the church would kill them outright. But protected by the great houses, the Nightbirds are well guarded treasures. When they discovered that there are other girls like them, and that their magic is far more than they were told, they see the nightbird system for what it is, a gilded cage. Now they must make a choice to remain kept birds or take control, remaking the city that dared to clip their wings. Set in a world of twisted fairy tales, the severed thread is the sequel to the bone spindle and the second in a trilogy that combines lost ruins, ride-or-die friendships, and heart-pounding romance from start to finish. From the retellings of Marissa Meyer to those of Melissa de la Cruz, there is no sign that teen readers' appetites for fairy tale retellings will ever be satisfied. And with the queer representation that Leslie thoughtfully wove into the story, this is a brand new, fresh take on a timeless tale. This book features an all-black cast in a variety of situations that hold up mirrors and windows for black teens as they geek out about falling in love, saving the world, and everyday magic. This is the first young adult anthology to feature stories across multiple genres, united by one unique theme featuring all black characters. 
something for every reader. Additionally, among these powerhouse creators are New York Times bestselling authors, award winners at the top of their game in YA, and more. 17-year-old Virginia makes bad choices. In fact, she's that kind of girl, according to the whispers. But as long as she has her tight-knit group of best friends by her side, she's able to ignore the gossipers. But when she winds up breaking tradition by not hooking up with her friend's boyfriend and actually falls in love with him, her life changes. Woven through Ellen Elena Brusa's powerful debut novel ever since are the retellings of various myths and folk fairy tales. They serve as a mirror to Virginia's life and a potent tool for exploring the ways in which culture has always sought to control women and their sexuality. It is these stories that light the way for Virginia to tell her own. Blazing into the YA scene, fans of Nina LaCour, Jandy Nelson, Lori Hulse Anderson, and Kathleen Glasgow will embrace this new talent. Don Hooper was recently a part of Random House Instant Number One New York Times bestselling anthology Black Boy Joy, which has netted over 100,000 copies. True True's solo debut focuses on Gil as he begins his senior year in an exclusive prep school in Manhattan, a different world compared to his Brooklyn Caribbean neighborhood. If it wasn't for the scholarship and a chance for a better life, he wouldn't have gone. After a racist run-in, he discovers the truth about the school and decides if the school isn't going to carve out a space for him, he will carve it out for himself. Using Sun Tzu's The Art of War as his guide, Gil wages his own clandestine war against the racist administration and works with the other black students to ensure their voices are finally heard, but at what cost? The writing here is fresh, commercial, and engaging, and is just the type of narrative contemporary YA readers are looking for. 16-year-old Bethany Green, though confident and self-assured, is what they call a late bloomer. She's never had a boyfriend date her first kiss. She's determined to change that. Dumped twice in two months, Jake Yoon wonders if he's the problem. This exciting romantic debut by adult author Rebecca Witherspoon features the refreshing character of Bethany Green and Jacob Yoon and reads like a love letter to black and plus size girls, especially those girls at the intersection of both, depicting them as love objects and stars of their own stories. Jacob Yoon easily defies stereotypes as a skateboarding Korean American heartthrob and the rest of the characters represent people of varying ethnicities and sexualities while not making the story about identity. One of the loveliest parts of the story is how Bethany and Jacob's relationship with their friends and family are as important as their romantic relationship, and watching them receive support, acceptance, and be uplifted by their community is equally affecting. Moving on to middle grade. Suara keeps in touch virtually with her grandmother, Pitterpati, during the pandemic. When she is told Pitterpati has died, she doesn't believe it and starts out on a search. As Suara investigates the mystery of her grandmother's disappearance, she stumbles upon a neighborhood mystery as well. With help from her friends and usually annoying brother and clues she certain came from Pitterpati, Suara solves that very real mystery and slowly comes to terms with the truth about her grandmother. Jane de Souza has created a character and a story that ticks all of the boxes in a middle grade novel sure to win the hearts and minds of readers. This is a companion book to The Ice Cream Machine and the first book Adam Ru and like the first book, Adam Rubin features black and white interior illustrations from six different artists. In addition to fun bonus elements, such as a writing prompt from Adam, a link to the video series he created about writing, and wormhole clues that are hidden throughout the text that attentive kids will love searching for. This is the perfect book for reluctant readers and kids who find long novels intimidating. This compelling new book from Tori Maldonado centers on Trev, who takes up boxing to protect his mother from his stepfather's threats that he made when he left his mom. Trev takes matters into his own hands, literally. He starts learning to box to handle his stepdad, but everyone isn't a fan of his plan because Trev's a talented artist and his hands could actually help him build a better future, and they're letting him know. But their advice for some distant future feels useless in his reality right now. Ultimately, Trev knows his future is in his hands and his hands are his own, his own and he has to choose how to use them. 
Questlove has authored many books, but this is his children's debut. A creator through and through, his latest venture, a new middle grade series, carries his signature humor, warmth, and artistic spirit. This is a compulsively readable, fast-paced adventure starring two black kids, Rahim and Kasha, who must find a way to bring Rahim home without destroying their timeline. Main characters Rahim and Kasha are hilarious on their own, but together they are outstanding with their playful jabs at each other and quick-witted retorts. At the same time, underneath the humor is, is a heartwarming classic middle grade adventure that thoughtfully dares kids to dream big and wide. When Agnes learns that some cultures picture God as female, she feels free to think and write about things from new perspectives. As she and her best friend Mo encourage each other to get out of their comfort zone at school, as the quiet kids, they quickly find it sort of cool seeing people react when they learn you're very much full of a thought of thought provoking opinions. Anne Bradens has written a fast paced funny novel that will resonate with anyone who's ever been afraid to say what they think or question the status quo. I am in love with this book. Um, it's a deeply personal story. Jack Chang, the author of See You in the Cosmos, new novel is a mix of the humorous and sublime while expertly exploring themes of family, friendship, identity, bullying, creativity, and both the love and culture gap between immigrant grandparents, parents, and their American raised kids. The Many Masks of Andy Jo, jo is destined to get the critical attention it so deserves. Onto picture books. From Annie DeFranco, the Grammy Award winning singer, songwriter, political activist, and feminist icon, comes a picture book with purpose, with heart, and with words that sing. In her signature folk style, DeFranco weaves a story that incorporates themes of individual power and collective responsibility. Designed to be read a louder song and poured over, this picture book is rich with meaningful text, poignant illustrations, and a unique message that will resonate with all. Before Raphael Warnock became a pastor and the first black senator from Georgia, he was a little boy whose father told him to get up, get dressed, put on his shoes, and get ready. So that's what he did along every step of his journey, from his workbooks, boots, to his marching band shoes, to his shiny lace-ups, Senator Reverend Warnock found the right shoes to fit his feet and to carry him toward his dreams. This is the first picture book by the best-selling acclaimed novelist, author of This Time Tomorrow, and we're all adults here, Emma Straub, and wow, does she have a knack for a young read aloud with tons of kid appeal and humor. This book will inspire kids to find their own hats from around the house or classroom or library, and then to continue the silliness in other creative ways. When a big sister moves to her own room, Kat is very excited to sleep in her own room, the big girl room, for the very first time. But her younger sister, Tina, is nervous to sleep in their old room without her. That night, as the storm thunders outside their windows, it turns out that the big girl room can feel a bit lonely, and Kat might be the one who needs the extra support. Katherine Schwarzenegger Pratt is a New York Times bestselling author, and in her newest book, she explores the relationship between an older sister and a younger one, honing in on a specific family dynamic that many readers are familiar with. With 176 pages of sketches, drawings, paintings, sculptures, and collages to pour over and narrated in Eric's own words about animals, nature, and art, children and children at heart are sure to lose themselves in the rich visual world of this new Eric Carl treasury. With a Sometimes it's hard to stay positive when you live in an old school bus instead of a normal house, when you have mostly just bread and ketchup to eat, and especially when you must go to a new school where all the other kids already have friends. But the sweet and creative boy in this story discovers that he can do things he never thought possible by using the skills his parents have taught him, imagining and trying and finding a way to look on the bright side. This in-house favorite was written and illustrated by Chad Otis, who lived in a school bus for four years as a child and didn't attend real school until third grade. He says one reason for creating this book was to share how the adversity of a nomadic life shaped who I am. 
Danby's favorite day is here. Thrilled to invite her friends to celebrate Children's Day as she did in Korea. She promises kites, tigers, and magic train rides. But when the reality of a picnic behind her parents' deli falls short of her grand plans, Danby must get creative to save the day in this delightful follow-up to Danby Leads the School Parade. Little Lovey loves her mom. She loves her sister, and she loves doing nice things for other people. But what happens when doing something nice means breaking some rules? Little Lovey is about to find out. Written by New York Times best-selling author Lovey Ajaya Jones, with bright bold art by Joey Spioto, this funny sweet story about a big-hearted girl with the best of intention is sure to become a family favorite. It's easy to be a tree. Just pretend your arms are branches, your body is a trunk, and your legs are roots. Don't move, even if a bird makes a nest on your head, a squirrel hides an acorn in your pocket, and a spider builds a web under your arm. It's okay. Trees don't mind these things. For so says the little girl who persuades her father to be a tree all day long, no matter what, even in the rain. The silly and sweet picture book by best-loved author-illustrator John Agee will inspire all kinds of imaginative play and is a trick to parents who will do just about anything for their kids. Ava's world is full of opposites, colorful sneakers on a gray sidewalk, thick books made up of thin sheets of paper, and dreams of huge spaces in her small head. Together, these opposites depict a full and impactful life as Ava moves from girl to student to scientist, from daughter to mother to grandmother. This exquisite book, with its artistry that reinforces our connections to one another and to our world as a lyrical classic in the making from the acclaimed illustrator of the perpetual bestseller Dragons Love Tacos and the highly acclaimed Baron Wolf, Daniel Salmieri. While looking into the tidal pools in Puerto Rico, Melly meets a crab who takes her on a dreamlike underwater adventure, teaches her about the importance of shark conservation, and reveals Melly's ultimate destiny to become the mother of sharks. Blending the autobiographical with the fantastical, Melissa Cristina Marquez shares her incredible story, not only to dispel myths about these misunderstood creatures, but also to pave the way for Latinas in STEM. Paired with Devin Ellis Kurtz's vibrant and emotive illustrations, this picture book is an irresistible journey through the wonders of the ocean, and above all, a rallying cry for marine conservation. And last, but certainly not least, we'll move on to graphic novels. Mac and all the other sharks are going to a party, but Kitana doesn't feel like celebrating. Then she learns a mysterious shark in the deep ocean hasn't been invited. With Mac's sparkly sharkle lighting the way, the shark princess set off on their newest adventure in the deep sea in the second installment of the Shark Princess graphic novel series by Nidhi Chinani. Caldecott Honor winner David Ezra Stein takes readers on a slapstick journey in his debut graphic novel, Beaky Barnes. Beaky Barnes features a similar witty fourth wall breaking humor, similar to David's interrupting chicken, which was both a critical and commercial success. The epic third book in this hilarious graphic novel series features the world's most her heroic super swine who's facing growing fame and villains. Quick pace, snappy dialogue, and fun illustrations make, a, make it perfect for reluctant readers. Written by Rob Harrell, the critically acclaimed author of Wink, where Bat Pig can first be seen, as well as the Life of Zarf series. The latest entry in our Who HQ graphic novel series thoughtfully sh shines a light on a lesser known side of one of our most beloved public figures. Young readers follow, follow the Dalai Lama through the 1959 Tibetan uprising as he flees Chinese suppression to India in a story of risk, political tension, and standing up for what is right. This is the eighth in our popular Who HQ graphic novel series. Doodles from the Boogie Down follows a young artist finding her voice in the Bronx. It lovingly nods to all the wonderful art that makes the Bronx special. Middle school greatest hits are included here like friendship and drama, crushes, field trips, birthday parties, high stakes exam, and secrets. This sparkling semi-autobiographical middle grade graphic novel debut will inspire brown girls to 
dream big and believe in their talents, even where they're the first people in their families to forge a new path. Jack, Quint, June, and Dirk are about to face a challenge unlike any they've faced before. At their local comic book store, the kids make a startling discovery. They've read every last issue of their favorite comic, Z-Man, and now no is new issues are coming, ever. Thanks a lot to the apocalypse. Our heroes have but one choice. Continue Z-Man's legacy by writing and illustrating their own comic book. We are super excited to present the last Comics on Earth series. Max handpicked Jay Cooper from Bot Series, who illustrated Quint's story in Thrilling Tales from the Treehouse. There's an energetic quality to his style of art that per fits perfectly with these stories. Doug Holkay, the illustrator of The Last Kids on Earth, will be providing art for the introduction and conclusion of each title. We'll be publishing one last comics on Earth book every spring moving forward, and we'll continue to publish a new book in the Last Kids on Earth series every fall. And excitingly, I'm super excited, as I say, to share with you Baker and Taylor's raffle to win a free framed piece of art from one of the Last Kids on Earth books with your library's name inscribed on it, along with a set of the Last Kids on Earth series books. Visit the CAPS, CAPS website to enter. The winning library will be announced in February. Ryan North and Eric Henderson, the best-selling masterminds behind Unbeatable Squirrel Girl, serve up a graphic novel that is equally laugh-aloud adventure and emotionally and an emotional gut punch. A story about the search for truth, chosen family, and rebirth. The journey of Marguerite and Daisy seeks to ask one vital question. How far are you willing to go to save the world? I hope you enjoyed this preview. For more information about our books, authors, and resources, please visit us online. Thank you.